Hi there everyone, my name is Zach and welcome to my channel. Amongst other things, I'm a reenactor and a jouster. And today, I want to talk to you about five ways that you can improve your reenacting. Now, I wrote this a while ago as an article, but I hope it's still got a lot of stuff that's useful in it. Um, it's written from my experience as a 15th century reenactor, um, but I think that actually a lot of this is applicable no matter what century or, um, or part of history you're reenacting. Okay, so number one is when you're wearing medieval or whatever period clothes, uh, if you're not planning on wearing authentic underwear, which you might not want to for some reason, I don't know, um, wear nondescript underwear. It's surprising how often these things can show, even without a torn pair of hose or something like that. Having Calvin Klein poking out the top of your hose really looks terrible. Um, I mean, some would say that it probably looks terrible no matter what century you're in, even in modern clothes, but um, it certainly ruins the feeling a little. Number two, buy yourself a second pair of period footwear before you buy yourself a second weapon. Now, I know that most of us got into it because we like hitting each other with swords and it's all great fun and all of that sort of thing. But you usually don't need more than one primary weapon. Um, most historical periods don't actually tend to use dual wielding all that much. It's not really that effective. So having more than one sword, while it looks great and is very Hollywood, doesn't actually help you too much. However, especially if you live in England or in you know, Northern Europe or that, that kind of place where there's lots of rain all the way through, even in the summer, having two pairs of shoes can be really useful. We might be doing two to four battles in a weekend if you're a, a battle reenactor, and that grass is going to make your turn shoes really, really cold and damp and wet. So having a second pair that you can wear for the second day is really, really useful. Or maybe even a second pair that you change into for the battles and keep a nice pair for when you're walking around camp, maybe not getting quite so wet and cold. Okay, number three is learn to fight in your period footwear. Um, there are so many really cool photos of reenactment battles that are ruined by people who are wearing modern footwear because they say it's some kind of a uh, a safety hazard to wear period footwear because there's no, uh, um, you know, the tread isn't as good. Well, actually, if you wear period footwear correctly, then the tread can be just as good. There are historical precedents of having um, tread on the bottom of the sole. There's a 15th century arming manuscript that I'm planning on doing some videos on in the future. Um, let me know if you want me to speed that up the queue. That actually includes a section on uh, uh, how you can add extra tread to your shoes so that they don't slip. You can also change the way that you move in your shoes. There's a great channel called Dimicator. I've probably pronounced that wrong. In that channel, he's got a couple of videos talking about how medieval people walked. And there's been some debate about this, but it's also something that I've tried as well because I like barefoot running and I know that um, there's a lot of similarities between um, barefoot running and the way you move with barefoot running and a really good way of walking in turn shoes. So if you are wearing turn shoes, practice walking on the ball of your foot and then you won't need to change out into modern footwear every time the grass gets a little bit damp. Number four, I think I've probably complained about this on the channel before. Don't talk about armour and weapons all of the time. Um, yes, if you're at a battle reenactment, then probably most of the people that are coming round, most of the members of the public, are actually interested in armour and weapons to a certain extent. But there's also probably another 200 reenactors who have already told them all of the uh, basic information about the armour and weapons that are on display. So they're probably getting a little bit tired of hearing the same stuff over and over again. Engaging members of the public in conversation about the weather or all sorts of normal things then gives them an inroad to talk about 
what they want to talk about. And they can ask you all sorts of other questions as well, maybe about your clothes or the food that you might be eating or the tents that you're staying in, all sorts of things. Okay, and number five is, this is quite linked to the last one. If someone asks you a question that you don't know the answer to, don't make anything up. If you're really not sure, then say that. That is a fine thing to say, okay? You don't need to be worried about it. Just say, that's a really great question. I actually don't know the answer to that. And then they'll feel really chuffed that they uh, uh, that they asked a, a brilliant question, okay? Um, get to know the people that you reenact regularly with, both in your group and elsewhere. So that if someone asks you a question that you don't know the answer to, you are able to give them someone that they can go and talk to. Another thing that you could do is if your reenactment group has got a social media presence, you could um, give them the contact details for there and ask them to send you the question and you'll send them the answer at a later date. It's, chances are you actually probably won't get anything back from that, but if you do, that's great. That's more engagement online. That's more feedback from the, um, from the event that you can give to the event organisers to prove that you have been doing a great job and that they should invite you back the next year. What we really don't want, though, is people creating reenactorisms. That's things that are untrue and, uh, uh, and spouting them as facts because they didn't want to say that they didn't know the answer to a question. Well, there we go. Five things that I think will improve everyone's reenacting experience. Can you think of any more? Please do leave them in the comments down below. Like, share and subscribe if you think this is something that is worthwhile. Um, all of those comments and, uh, and likes and all of that really helps keep me going, keep making more videos. Thank you very much to everyone who's done that in the past and I will see you in my next video. Bye bye.